All right, let's talk about the spears. But first, I have to tell you this, that I have done a bunch of testings from using my friend's account, who happens to be a spear user. But I can't really show you as it is against the terms of service to use a different account, therefore risking a ban if proven. So you just have to take my word for it and hope for the best. <laughs> Anywho, the spear is a melee class that primarily invests on simply basic damage. As you can see right here, it's just only got basic damage. It doesn't have anything in particular, like say, for if you're twin sword, there's dual damage. If you're using, say, the daggers, then you'll be using crits or crit damage. But the spears doesn't lean on any of them, making it a class that's a lot more flexible. You can invest externally towards basic damage, dual damage or crits or if you want to you can actually do all three it actually doesn't matter the flexibility seems to be not a big sort of change about this class you can do whatever the fuck you want with it and it'll probably still do well now this class have the highest attack growth in the game as you can see basic damage 24 this is the highest that you'll ever get this one only has 20. Even the bow doesn't have that high of an attack. Its bows have the second highest attack. But still, the highest attack growth is still by far this class. And in spite of being categorized as a melee class, it's actually got the range, the attack range of a ranged class making it kind of deceptive. I know that this is a melee class as it invests primarily on strength, which is considered melee damage stats. So this is without a doubt a melee class, but for some reason it's got the attack range of a ranged class. Alright, now some of its abilities and attacks have AoE coverage, as you can see right here. It has area of effect, and this is pretty much on almost every single skill that's active, like say this one, it has area of effect on a lot of its primary skills. So this is actually quite strong and it makes farming a little bit more quickly than most other classes because you hit multiple enemies at once. So now this class has amazing debuffs, like first it's got actually uh, the movement speed, it's got slows, movement speed reduction by 30%, so this is considered a slow. So it's got a slow, it's got an attack speed reduction as well on Massacre, it's also got skill speed reduction as well, and it's also got something called armor break. All right? Now, this class, since it's a melee and it's still a derivative from the warrior, it's got some basic skills that add some bulk to the class, like say, if you can check here on the warrior skill. It's also got some physical reinforcement, which adds defense. It's also got robustness, which increases melee and ranged evasion, and some damage negation or damage reduction on melee and ranged as well. To add further, this class also has HP regen base. So it's not exactly a soft class in spite of being, well, the highest damage class in the game. It's also got some unique abilities, like say Block Pierce, which you can see right here. Let me take a look. It's got Block Pierce, so this actually pierces through, say, a Knight's Block, or classes that actually utilize the Block mechanic. It's mostly a PvE skill, I mean a PvP skill, so it's actually quite useful if you're using it to fight. It's also got Damage Reduction Negation which you can see, well, this is also considered damage, reduction, negation. There's actually a lot more, but I'm not quite sure which one it is. This one actually decreases your own stats, but it increases attacks. Ah, this one, it's got defense reduction, but you, but you actually increase your, your attack range. So it's not, really, it's not really the skill that I'm talking about. But this is a very very good passive as well because it actually makes you hit even further away 
So I, I would say the defense negation, I mean the defense decrease that you get from using this is somewhat mitigated by the fact that you can hit, that you can hit the enemy from a farther range. Now, you also have this one. This is why this class is very strong. Damage, reduction, negation, 25. This is a, an absurd amount. Basic damage negation means if someone has a basic damage reduction, it will enable this class to bypass this amount of that stat, making you able to hit even further. And if you get someone's, if someone's already soft and you hit this, it's potentially a huge, huge damage increase, as this also adds basic damage. Now, this is quite interesting, because I think that this class is just pretty much broken, <laughs> you could say. Next, let's talk about disables. I think that this class got one of the best disables in the game. It's probably not the best, but it is one of the best. It's got three. It's got bind on one skill. It's also got slows, which will be this one. And it's also got pull. Now pull is like, you will actually pull everyone towards you in an AoE. So if you hit somebody, say like you hit so like you use the skill right here, and you actually use the skill, everyone's gonna is gonna get pulled towards you. So I don't know if anyone here plays Dota, but this is basically reverse polarity from Magnus. That's basically what the skill is about. And I think it's fucking awesome. It adds some kind of depth. To the class because once you pull those people in then they will all get hit by your aoe attacks because they'll they'll be in a puddle together so this is actually potentially a very powerful skill that you need to get i think without this skill the class won't be as powerful but with this this would make you super powerful compared to when you don't have it so this is a must-have for sure however it is a legendary skill so, don't expect it to be easy. Next, the class also got really good early game skills, like say, Chain of Eternity. This thing actually deals a pretty good amount of damage, and it also has a bind. And it's a pretty good starting skill. Now, because of this, the class is still relevant even prior to its second awakening. It's also got attack speed that's quite fast, even without major attack speed investments and with AoE spread attacks, and the range to actually, well, hit enemies from further away, this will also sort of put you in this place where you don't need to walk so much to hit an opponent, so you can hit and hit and hit. It's like when you're farming, you can act almost like a, like a hunter. You don't have to walk when you kill something, you don't have to walk because this is time loss. This is this is time loss, guys. When you're walking towards a towards a mob, that's time loss. In which a ranged class probably won't have that kind of problem. This means that this class can farm very, very fast. There truly isn't much that I could find regarding anything bad about the class. To be perfectly honest, I couldn't even find more than one truly is a really good class to start with <laughs> but if there's truly one con that i can think of well i actually find two but the first one is really scraping under the barrel it is the second softest melee class in the game like if you see here it's got only 23 vitality which means it's got very bad hp growth for a melee class it's not it's not super bad because this one has well, it's not, it's not down by much compared to, say, this one. But this class doesn't have the best HP stats, so it's not very tanky. It's not tanky at all. You could say it's not, it's not actually tanky at all. Next, it's... Mm, I mean, the, the reason why I said I'm scraping under the barrel is because even though the class is not exactly that tanky, it's still tankier than... Pretty much both of these, both of these. So it's still 
pretty good. It's still pretty tanky, but it's not tanky. You get what I'm saying? So it's not actually a soft class. And if there truly is one thing that's not that good about the class, it's probably just the fact that it doesn't seem to have any movement speed increase modifiers. Like you can actually see from all the spells, it doesn't actually have movement speed increase at all. When you see this, it means that you need to only walk. You can only walk. You can't really... You don't really move very fast. And that's kind of the only downside. Classes like, say, the dual sword. We got this skill. Rush. Increases movement speed. So this is probably one of the only few things... Nah, well, one of the only things that I can talk about that's not that good about a class. But everything else seems to be fucking broken. And... Yeah, that's pretty much all I can find about the spear. In conclusion, I think that the spear is a fucking broken class. I think that this class is pretty damn good in terms of pretty much everything. Its early game is really good. It's got really good starting uh, skills. It's got very good starting stats as well because it hits very hard. It's also not, it's not squishy, so it actually can tank a fair amount. And... I would say this is a class that's pretty good at farming, so you don't really have any downsides in using this class. If I have one thing to probably say about this class, as a final say, it's probably the fact that this class is pretty fucking broken, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows about it by, by now. But yeah, I hope that you guys learned something new from this video. And if you learned something from this video and you like this, this kind of videos and you want me to do this for different classes, Please do let me know in the comment section down below what class you want me to do next. And we'll see about it. This is your Uncle Bigfish. And have a nice day, guys. Bye.